Welcome back, uh, dear viewers. And in this segment of our program, we are going to talk about cyber security and how can we protect, protect ourselves from the uh, downside of uh, technology. And uh, we are joined today by uh, Mr. Abdul Magdi. He is a technology executive. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, uh, Mr. Magdi. Happy Eid. Happy to have you with us. And, and so let's get to the point directly. As much as technology is facilitating our lives, there are many threats to individuals and organizations uh, alike. So uh, we know that cybersecurity is a term used to refer to the domain of practice that has to do with the protection online. First of all, what are these top threats when it comes to individual use or organization use of, uh, of the Internet? Yeah, first, good morning and thanks for having me and happy Eid Thank to you happy and to, to our you. viewers. Okay. And yeah, I think like we all love technology. I mean, like all technology advance, the advancements, all the social networks, all the different tools and apps that we use, we love that. And that's forever expanding. But it comes a downside that we hear a lot about lots of issues that has to do with security and privacy. So people getting in trouble, losing, losing their data, and even like getting into some like almost close to uh, like threats to their own safety. So uh, like cybersecurity is the term that has to do is like moving security into the virtual world that with everything that has to do with technology. If we look at what had been going on in the past like decades and in the past year, we're going to see that there are different patterns of the, the different types of threats. One of the, the top threats these days is what we call ransomware, which I think we like we heard a lot about that in the past year. And I think like if we look at it statistically recently in like this year, but it's over $14 billion of losses as a result of ransomware. So this is a huge loss. What, 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 is, what is ransomware? Ransomware is like when hackers access your device mm. and lock it by scrambling data. So you, you have your PC or the company has its own server and there's a lot of files that we're working on. So if hackers could access that system, they're going to scramble data so you cannot see these data and then they're going to give you a screen telling you that your data is locked, pay me like a thousand dollars in order for uh, me to give you access yeah, to this data. Yeah. So this is this is ransomware. That's so a huge number, fourteen billion dollars. That's a huge per number. Year, yeah. yeah, that's a huge number. Mm. It's like uh, mm. like it, it's the biggest threat for mm. cybersecurity these mm. days. And mm. uh, and also the fourteen billion is almost in the U.S. alone. So this is wow. This is a massive threat. So if you mm. look at cybersecurity, it's taken very very seriously on a global scale and even the governmental right. and international levels. So ransomware is a big threat and I think by then it's, it's, uh, it validates the need for us to be like safe online and also um, to be cautious in terms of the different types of attacks. Besides ransomware, there is lots of phishing attempts which is like much more like simpler in which that someone is sending us an email with a link and, but the email is coming from someone else other than the person that we know. So we think this is an email from a coworker or a friend, and then we open it and it's actually coming from someone else who's like using the same name. And then there is a link through which they can like access our system or hack us in a different way. So um, these are some of the samples, some of the top threats. Also, if we look right now, like in businesses and even individuals, lots of us really update our data or upload our data into the cloud. So we use like cloud providers like big companies. We put our data online because we might lose our phone or change our phone. And like some of the standard features when you have a new device or a laptop mm. is that we kind of upload mm. our data on the cloud. So all these data are on the cloud. So if there is any threat that goes into some of these cloud providers, these are like the biggest providers. So they are the, techno the biggest technology providers, which has an upside in which the DR, they have the most advanced protection, but also any, any issue that happens with them is going to also affect us. Right. Like other things right. like using different software that's especially in companies, if I use a third party software that I give it access to my system, if anything happened to this software, it's most likely to affect my system as well because hackers can use it as, as mm -hmm. backdoor. So uh, these are all different types of threats and I think it's, um, so we can say that cybersecurity is getting more advanced than just having an antivirus. Um, like an antivirus is something that's, that's important to have mm. to lock our security, but also there is a component of being aware of how to protect yourself. Things right. like phishing attempts, there's, a, there's always what they call it, hackers call it social engineering. Mm. Social engineering is that when you organize your thoughts in which that I know that I want to access your system and I so uh, she's your friend, so I'm going to use her system to access your system and I'm going to organize an interaction of you 
Like, if I know what you're going to be preparing tomorrow, I'm going to send you an email relevant to what's going to happen tomorrow at the right time. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to click the link because you're in a rush. And by then, I'm going to access your system through her. So there's a lot of tricky and very deceptive techniques that's used by hackers. And by then, part of this is about understanding that, also being cautious and verifying like, um, that we are on the safe side. Beautifully explained. So, uh, Mr. Abdo, as a technology user, how can I protect myself from these attacks? Yeah, I think like there, is, there are two components. There is like the, the hard part in which that I have to mm. secure my software and hardware. Is that like um, if I'm using, if, if it's my PC, for example, some of the most obvious things is that I have the right antivirus software and the security mm. updates. So one big part is uh, right now, most operating systems, they have their own like security built in. So there is a big part of security that's kind of built in within like uh, Windows or Mac or whatever system that we're using. And there is additional software to protect it from very specific like uh, threats like uh, viruses and malware, etc. So I have to make sure that my system is up to date in terms of um, like doing full protection and also understanding that there is like uh, quick updates as might because like as companies discover there are threats, they uh, produce a new update and sometimes you have to download this update like quite quickly to protect yourself because if there is like a window of three days, if you did not install the latest update within this period of time, it might be a window for hackers to use it because by mm -hmm. then once it's announced, other hackers really know that it exists and they can use it. Mm -hmm. And usually we're quite lazy or we're working on something. So we usually say later, later, tomorrow, remind me tomorrow. Right. So it's, right. uh, it's, uh, it's advised is like late at night as you're done with your work, let the system like um, update at night and make sure that you're protecting yourself from that like hard part. The soft part is also being cautious is in, in being able to identify this is a po possible threat. This is a, like a social engineering attack and understanding also that this is this has to do with training. So there's a lot of intense training, especially at the corporate side. I mean, if you're being on board, I had an experience in Washington DC for three months. And the first task before I accessed their system was going through a two hours of cybersecurity training. So the first thing in order for, for us to give you access to our system, you have to get training and when it comes to cybersecurity. You have to understand all these terms and how to deal with it. And also as you go along, there is a lot of like drills, there's a lot of training exercises. You might actually get an email from a colleague and it's not from a colleague, but they want to see if you're capable of protecting yourself this way. So there is a component in which they're taking care of my like software and also taking care of my focus while dealing with different, like even like friend requests and lots of messaging and messengers and WhatsApp. So understanding who's sending that and, uh, and how to deal with it if there is, there is a threat as well. Well, um, listening to you, uh, Engineer Magdi, uh, um, a funny thought yes. came to my mind. Um, uh, you know, I, I got the feeling that you, um, uh, cybersecurity um, uh, professionals, uh, are like the police and the hackers are like the thieves. I mean, that, that's just the, uh, and I got the impression by, by the number of times you repeated the, the word hackers, that it is the fastest, entre, entre parenthèses, the fastest growing job in the world now. I mean, you could, maybe some kids, uh, you would ask some kids what do you want to do when you grow up. This is crazy. You ask, and they would tell you, hmm. they don't tell you I want to be an, an engineer, a yes. cybersecurity engineer. They tell you I want to be a hacker. So, so I mean, you listen to kids and, and it, hmm. yeah, we're laughing now, but, but w this is very, very threatening. So, so talk to us about that. Yeah, it, it is. Phenomena, and I think, yeah. Yeah, it is. And I think also it's like part of us, especially like when you're younger, is that we want to do like adventure stuff. Yeah, right. So hacking is like a beautiful world of being able to do something you're not supposed to do. So I actually got into hacking as a teenager. So I was online and I had a coach. Yeah. And then he said that he's going to start like te teach us a hacking. And then he, he was teaching us hacking by recommending books that we read. And then we have a discussion around it. And um, like the author of these books was uh, Kevin Mitnick. He, he's like one of the biggest names when it comes to cybersecurity. He was actually a hacker. Right. So what usually happens with these is that there is always well, a the, green Well, the best cybersecurity engineer, I guess, must know a lot about hacking. Exactly. <laughs> and and actually, a, a former, yes. an ex-hacker would be the best, I guess. Exactly, yeah. because these hackers, yeah. like, they mm. get, like, when they are caught, and they are offered, either would you like to spend your life in jail or would you like to work for us? So this is, this is usually part of it is there is a lot of transitioning hackers who get into the, like, in supporting the, uh, the security efforts. So definitely during these years, if you're like teenage years, you get really interested in these things. And by then there is, there is an ethical border in terms of understanding that you're going to use that knowledge 
in kind of in, in doing right, like good things, not doing bad things, which is also like um, it's part of the training. So when, whenever you go into the cybersecurity training or like hacking training, and most people like to use the word hacking training because it's like it's much more entertaining and much right. more active. Yeah. So once you go into that, some of the, the first things that even your coach tell you is that you have to promise first that you're not going to be using this knowledge and doing anything illegal because also it's his, his responsibility to, to do that. So yeah, definitely it's a very like um, flourishing space professionally and also it's a very um, important aspect because by then the police forces are moving online and also it has huge impact. We talked about like one type of hacking is $14 billion, so this is huge money. Like, and also it becomes really sophisticated with a lot of emerging technologies like machine learning and artificial intelligence. So this space is pretty much emerging. And, um, and I think you like your product, like some people have it within them is that they want to be stopping the bad guys. So by then these actually make the best type of what they call it white hat hackers. Yeah. So Mr. Abdul, how do you see the future of uh, technology with all these uh, uh, cyber security challenges? Yeah, and I think like once some, once like something is growing, there has to be like the the safety and security mm. and privacy has to be growing with it, which we see that there is a lot of effort in that space, and also there is a lot of promotion for cybersecurity yes. with like the attacks. So one thing is that there is an effort to respond to some of these attacks. So we hear about all that data data leakage from Facebook. We, we mm. hear about the. Uh, like the influence on the U.S. elections using mm, different mm, hacking techniques. So mm. I think there is a lot of learning that goes into the industry as we see different types of implementations for these like hacking or manipulation uh, techniques. So there is a lot of uh, learning that goes on from the industry itself. And I see as you cannot stop and you should not be stopping technology innovation, but rather you have to understand how it works and also you grow with it. So there is a lot of research and a lot of efforts and a lot of corporates that really work on the security front. And also there is a lot of recruitments that happen on the, from the side of the bad guys and understanding how they work, engineering their methodology, and also uh, having them also included in the discussion when it comes to cybersecurity. I think if you look at different parts of the world, there's like big security conferences, which is like hacker conferences. So you go, you go there to get hacked. And I think like there are a lot of interesting reports on the media in which the, the journalist goes into this conference for and they are preparing a report and by then the objective is for a hacker to penetrate his phone and to do something with it. And actually they demonstrate in camera how does this work. So this actually adds a lot of visibility to the topic to the viewers and also it shows to the community of how these things work and how to stop it. So uh, definitely in terms of like visibility, uh, that's going to be like spreading awareness and having people aware that this is how it works and this is how to stop it. These are vital points to like make sure that we're growing our safety and security while technology is growing. Right. Um, and Mr. Um, Magdi, um, Engineer Magdi, uh, what kind of knowledge and training is needed to tighten the grip on cybersecurity within organizations now? Yeah, I think like different organizations ha like they have different systems of how they, they approach cybersecurity. Like everyone agrees on the importance of cybersecurity, especially with more critical organizations like banks and, and institutions like that, even like usual businesses. So uh, like the standard procedure right now is to have an onboarding training in which that once you're like becoming an employee of this organization, you have to make sure that your knowledge of cybersecurity is up to a specific standard. Sometimes also organizations use different tools. So you have to be trained on a specific like, um, like exercises and behaviors working with these different tools of how to protect the cloud application, et cetera. Um, there are usually different notifications that really pop up. So paying attention to that, understanding that this is not something to say I agree or I dismiss. You have to really pay attention to what's on the screen. And, um, and by then you have ongoing drills, like trainings that you know that while working in something, there might be an attempt like as part of the HR department or as part of like the, a cybersecurity team within the, the company to discover uh, threats. I think hackers say that uh, humans are the weakest link. So when you, like in, in the hacking community, you say that humans are weakest link because like systems could be protected, but if there is specific users, you can actually use and manipulate these users to access the systems. So that's why it's very crucial for lots of training and focus training activities to take place. Of course, for larger organization that becomes like um, much more possible because if you're a smaller organization, like um, employees probably do not stay that long and most likely you rely on third party applications so you don't have big infrastructure to protect but, it's, but also you can find like much, much more faster and cheaper options to 
to get your employees and a staff if you're a small enterprise or, or like a growing business on like using uh, not necessarily very advanced, uh, very complicated and very lengthy and costly systems of training, uh, but rather having things like on the spot that allow people to, to do that. Like some of the interesting applications is something that's called cybersecurity assistance. So it's like an artificial intelligence assistant that once something is happening with your system, it tells you that this is a threat. Take this really seriously. Mr. Magdi, what is the best uh, um, d university degree to, to take to, to prepare uh, for a career in, in, in cybersecurity? Well, I think from, from what I see, like universities take different approaches to that and depending on their computer science. So I think like when it comes to computer science, you're going to find specialities that has to do with cybersecurity. I'm not sure if this is an undergrad degree, but definitely there are postgrad degrees. There is very deep uh, like um, specializations in that. But I think even cybersecurity is usually part of the curriculum anyway for things that I, I think even has to do with business, not just like mm. not, not just engineering or, right. or software engineering. So right. I think also we're gonna be start to see that even like for Expand, kids. Yeah. I think actually yeah. some, some schools might be teaching basics of mm. cybersecurity mm. because like once you become a user as a child, it's the best mm. time for you to learn. We, we, we can safely say that this is an area, I guess, yes. Uh, that will expand in the, in the upcoming decades, can't we? Definitely, that's yeah. actually becoming because mm -hmm. like we used to live just in the physical world and mm -hmm. now we're partially also living in the virtual. virtual world. So yeah. like the safety and security that we had there, mm -hmm. uh, there are another scope. So we have to expand that. So when it comes to safety and security, uh, this is gonna be covering a bigger uh, part of our perception when it comes mm -hmm. to security. And definitely mm -hmm. like in the physical world we can see and we can sense, but by then mm -hmm. in the virtual world it's mm -hmm. much more subtle and it could actually be very damaging. Mm. So yes, definitely, there's going to be a lot of expansion in that space in the future. So finally, uh, in two minutes, uh, Mr. Magdi, can uh, you tell us uh, more about uh, how can we protect ourselves from social engineering? Yeah, from like social engineering, from all like cyber threats, it's, it's about first, and not to freak out, because I, actually mm. this is like one of the things, because lots of people when they actually hear about cybersecurity, they kind of say that, okay, I'm not gonna use my phone, I'm gonna downgrade to my old Nokia from yes. 20 years ago. So this is usually, it's not a good idea because uh, lots of these manufacturers, they have a lot of protection built in, but I think the best you can do is to keep yourself updated with what kind of threats are, are happening, and I think like, uh, it's the role of the media as well as that we're, we're talking about cybersecurity. We're, we're talking about there's something called ransomware that people could look your phone and then ask you to pay a ransom. So understanding these terms and having the user always reminded by tools and by the media and by different training in their organizations that this is uh, cybersecurity and this is what you kind of need to be aware of. Uh, this, is, this is the best approach. So having consistent um, updates and, and, and a base of knowledge when it comes to cybersecurity, how to protect myself without freaking out so I would be comfortable using technology while also I'm aware of when threats might arise and how to respond to them. So finally, I'd like to thank you, Mr. Abdo uh, Magdi, Technology Executive. Thank you, sir, for being Thanks with for us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Eid. Thank you and happy Eid. Thanks. It's been very informative. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Happy Eid, Shiri. Happy Eid, Mohammed. And uh, by that, dear viewers, we come to the end of today's edition of The Breakfast Show. See you tomorrow with a new crew.